Hey YouTube, Kevin Cleary with a knife video. Uh, I have a knife today that is pretty unique in my collection and is a pretty unique knife just in general uh, for a couple of reasons. But by, let me let me start off by saying uh, something about first how I ended up with this knife and then very quickly something about uh, custom knife work, knife factory in general. Uh, so this is a knife uh, that is not really in my wheelhouse in terms of what I generally collect, um, nor is it in my price range, really. Uh, I do have a couple of pricier blades, uh, but this is certainly on the higher end of the scale for me. Uh, now, let me point out a couple of things. First of all, the way I got this knife was I I generally watch Epic Snuggle Bunny's videos. I don't watch every single one, but uh, he has quite a few knives I'm interested in. And so when I saw the Custom Knife Factory Garza as a new offering from Custom Knife Factory, I wanted to check it out. Uh, I've been interested in their knives for some time. Of course, everyone knows about the Decepticon and the Decepticon 2. Both of those are awesome. Uh, there's also like the Rabbit and the Elf, uh, both of which are really cool. Uh, so I kind of, you know, a number of factors made me interested in the video. I went ahead and watched it and was totally taken by the knife. And I went ahead and even did further research. I looked on, you know, different retailers to see who had it and how much they had it for and how many they had and that kind of stuff. Wanted to get a good sense for the knife and thought, you know, uh, probably not a knife I'll be picking up, but boy, is it ever nice. So that was, you know, the in the evening uh, and the next, so I go to bed, no big deal. Wake up the next day and some, at some point through the day, I check on blade forums. I don't do this that frequently, maybe once or twice a day, but uh, I check on blade forums and this guy says, hey, I've got a bunch of stuff for sale and I really want it to move because I'm trying to finance something else. So I start looking through the stuff and on the list is a custom knife factory Garza for an astronomically good price. Uh, nearly half price, not quite half price, but close. Um, so at that price point, now what I wonder is, this was one of those knives that if you signed up for like an early mailing list, you could get it cheaper. And I, I'm, I'm gonna take a guess and say, this guy must have got it at the lower price point and so he could afford to let it go for a little less. Um, and he was, you know, he was, the other prices that he had, you know, were really, really good. There was a bunch of stuff that was actually really good stuff, uh, all for much better prices than you usually see, even on the secondary market. So anyway, uh, you know, he, it was a very aggressive sale, and so I said, hey, I'll take the Garza. You know, and now that I'd known about it, I'd done research about it, I was like, hey, yeah, let's do it. So I picked up this knife, in that very unique way, and the chances of that ever happening again, you know, what are the chances of me ever being interested in a fairly high-end knife and then one just coming in at a phenomenal price that I can actually afford? That may never happen to me again. You know, it, it just, that that may be the one and only time that I'm that fortunate. So I, I may never end up with another knife of this caliber, at least it, certainly not in that way. You know, maybe trades or other things like that may happen, but, uh, so that's how I ended up with this knife and, and I was, I'm really, really excited about it. Further, the seller got it to me really fast, so that was awesome. Now, the next thing I want to tell you is a little bit about Custom Knife Factory. The way these knives work are, you know, they're Russian design knives. They are, they do the, the building of the parts in China. Those parts come back to Russia to be assembled by, you know, very skilled tradespeople and then they, they come over here. So they're very, you know, the materials are very high end. The fit and finish is amazing. Um, they, they certainly are uh, worth every penny that they're charging in terms of if you compare them to other blades that would be the same materials and same quality. Um, the, the, the price point is, is actually quite low. I think most, most of them go for around 390. That seems to be their magic number. Um, and certainly they would compete well and compare well to knives that are between four and five hundred dollars, no question. So that's that's the process. They're not they're not manufactured in China, they're the parts are made in China, shipped to Russia, and they're hand built in Russia. Okay, so let's let's continue. I I know the lighting is messing up. I think it'll come back before the video is over, and it may change as I zoom in the camera. Now before I get into the rest of the details about this knife, let me just show you what it comes with. It does come in a pouch like this, which is a nice presentation. It comes with a certificate of authenticity, and it comes with 
sort of a, a microfiber cloth. Uh, it's not as nice as the Chris Reeve cloths, but uh, it's still a nice touch. And actually before I go and do close-ups and stuff, I will give that knife a quick wipe. Uh, and the cloth is nice to have because of a couple things. The, the flat titanium here that's sort of a, a uh, grinder satin finish. Um, it's just sort of a, a raw titanium finish, I guess, is a better way to put it. Um, it does collect fingerprints, and the blade is not too bad. It's a, it's a stone wash, but it's a very fine stone wash. So uh, even it will show some fingerprints. So hopefully there won't be too much on there, uh, and the cloth does work well for, for dealing with that. Now, having kind of given you the introduction and uh, how I came to be the owner of this knife, let's talk about what I like about it, what I initially found interesting about it, and what, what kind of turned me on in the first place, and then what I have uh, come to like even further. So size and weight on this is very, very good. Uh, eight and a half inches, three and five eighths for the blade, three and five eighths for the blade, four and seven eighths for the handle, and so eight and a half overall. Uh, that's a great size for EDC, and it weighs in at five ounces. So um, that's not a bad weight. I, I like, and I'm definitely interested in full titanium frame locks. However, one of the things that sometimes puts me off from buying them is the weight. You know, you get a lot of titanium, and it starts to add up really quickly, and so now you're getting into very, very heavy blades. Um, this one, although five ounces is heavy enough, you know, it feels like a quality blade. Uh, it's certainly not too heavy to pocket and carry quite comfortably. Okay, so that's the first thing. Size and weight were something that got me interested. Now, another thing that made me really interested is the overall look of the knife and especially the blade. Now, I want to talk about one other thing before uh, I get into more of the specific details. Uh, I like the fact that this is not a flipper. I feel like the last few weeks or months, everything I have is, is a flipper. So I wanted to kind of depart from that a little bit and I've picked up a couple others along the way recently that are not flippers just to kind of take a break from it, okay? Now, uh, having already given you the specs on this, uh, eight and a half inches, three and five eighths, four and seven eighths, and five ounces, let's go ahead and talk about the specific features starting off with the blade. Uh, I do like this blade, it's, it's not, anything terribly new or different. Um, it is implemented very well, but there are a number of this style, um, you know, the, the Benchmade 940, the Benchmade, the A10 Contigo, uh, the CRKT Eraser, you know, this sort of uh, drop point with almost a reverse tanto, you know, sheep's foot, with all of those elements kind of jammed in together. Uh, there, there are a number of those out there and they're really nice and they're really functional. One thing I like about this one is that it's a little more, um, uh, it leans a little more toward the 940 blade style where it's a bit of a, it's a more gentle uh, belly and a more, and of course it's even more gentle in the tip. So, you know, you could sort of call this a modified drop point really. Uh, notice there is a lot of belly which is nice and I can tell you that I've done a fair bit of slicing with this and it actually slices really well. So the edge geometry is quite good. There's not a whole lot of steel here. Uh, I did on the sort of negative side have to sharpen it. Now that's only my mileage. I've heard other guys who said hey it came really sharp. This came not sharp. Uh, I did need to touch it up. Uh, it wasn't wasn't terrible. It would cut paper but it certainly wouldn't shave hair. It certainly wouldn't cut foam book paper well. Um, but uh, I did touch it up. It's S35VN steel, so uh, it took an edge really nicely. Uh, it, the nice thing about S35VN is it tends to it tends to hold an edge better than you feel like it should. You know, when you sharpen it, you go, "Yeah, this is not bad to sharpen at all." You know, if, if I wonder if it'll go dull quickly. Generally, that's the way, right? A, a soft steel is easy, easy to sharpen, doesn't hold the edge well. Uh, S35VN tends to um, really max out the equation in terms of it's reasonably easy to sharpen. Now it's not like sharpening 8CR13 MOV, but it's, it's relatively easy compared to M390 or CTS204P or some other blade steels. Uh, S35VN is a little easier to sharpen in my experience. Um, and this is not super, super hard. I think it lands around 5960 Rockwell hardness. Uh, let me check. I guess they didn't say so on the card. 
But uh, that would be my take. I, I don't know. I'd maybe peg it just a teeny bit harder than uh, the Sabenza S35VN. Okay, now, great steel, great blade, and, and it's a very functional blade shape, okay? Um, I've done, you know, you've got lots of edge, uh, you've got a good point, uh, so it, it's a nice combination of, of desirable features from a lot of blade shapes. It is a flat grind rather than a hollow grind, and um, I don't know where I am on that. I, I would almost like to see a hollow grind on uh, this blade, I just feel like it would perform a little better and it would add a, pe a bit more interest I think, you know, with the hollow grind it would just be a little a little touch of detail that that would make the knife really really nice. Uh, not the end of the world, you know, it still looks great, it still functions really well and I can tell you I've cut a few things that are notoriously bad with a, with a thicker blade steel and this is fairly thick blade steel. Uh, I have sliced a few things that, you know, apples will tend to split on you, cheese will tend to hang up. Uh, I've cut a few different things and had no issues uh, with, with uh, none of the issues that I would expect to see from a thicker blade in a flat grind, okay? So I'm quite happy with the blade shape. One thing that is on here, this is really cool, it's just a, a plain blade with just the Custom Knife Factory logo right here. That's, I think, a really classy feature. I hate when... Uh, companies just go wild and put their logo all over the place. I don't mind, you know, the little spider coat. Hey, that's classy. It's cool. Uh, but people, some companies go totally crazy with uh, marking up their blades. Uh, let me zoom in here. Move off to the side. There we go. And I'll give you a closer look at this blade. So there it is. Uh, modified drop point S35VN. Flat grind. Nice belly here. Uh, so yeah, very nice blade. You can see on the back of the blade, which is a really nice touch, S35VN right there. Uh, there's the Custom Knife Factory logo. And there's the singular thumb stud, or uh, what do people call it? Some people say thumb log. I don't really like that. So we'll just call it a thumb stud. Uh, nothing on this side, but it is reversible. Uh, we'll talk more about that when we get to deployment, which we'll do right now. So... That's the blade. I like the blade. It's very functional. It looks great with the knife. Oh wait, one more thing. I said I was going to switch, but I'm not. Um, the flats and the the grind flow very nicely into the handle. Notice how the um, machine titanium sort of built creates a line here, and that line is nicely continued into the blade. Uh, so you sort of get this nice flowing shape made out of those two uh, lines as they connect with one another. It looks really, really sharp. Let's go on and talk about lockup and deployment. It is a stainless steel frame lock. There is a lock bar insert here. And one of the cool things about this, it's so finely finished and so expertly finished. See if I put it this way, if you can see that better. That should be better. Uh, and so expertly finished that it's really hard to see. Even with the naked eye, it's hard to see the lock bar insert. And so you're probably not going to see it on camera because it's really, it's like perfectly milled into the titanium where there's there's like no very very little chance of seeing it you may be able to see here the little piece that extends back as the over travel stop okay so there is a lock bar insert which is a nice touch uh, it is honorable bearing pivot system and it is thumb stud deployment uh, by the way the lock also has a nice little cutout here making it very comfortable to um, actuate the lock Knife deploys really quickly and very, very smooth. Let's see if I can demonstrate just how smooth it is for you. There you go. Um, really, really nice. One of the things that's really cool about this, I don't know if I can get it to happen on camera. Not really. If you don't like flick it out really hard, try not to, but it's hard. Uh, it almost floats out of the handle and just, just slides into place. It's absolutely gorgeous the feel of this uh, ball bearing. Certainly um, a very high level of quality in the uh, ball bearing pivot system on this. So lockup and deployment are excellent. The feel is just superb. It's it's exceptionally well done. It just it just feels like something very high quality. Now I've got to say make this comment here. I don't have a bunch of mid-tech knives. You know I don't have a long list of of five, six, seven, eight hundred dollar blades that I could compare this to. Um, so for my mileage, all those things are true. You now you maybe uh, have a different kind of collection than I do, and you're comparing it to a different 
you know, a different experience set. Uh, and so you may say, oh, Kevin, it's not that great of deployment. But for me, it's, it's phenomenal. Now, I say that, as I pointed out, not having a whole lot of really high-end stuff to compare it to. Now, let's continue on. So lock of deployment are good, comfortable, very smooth, and it's fast if you want it to be fast. But I think what's more noticeable is just how smooth it is. Uh, I, I've tried a few times here to deploy it slowly, but you just it's hard to do. Rather than that, I will just show you how nicely it just falls closed into the handle. And let's go on to the handle. Uh, the handle has this really nice um, blue anodized titanium. Uh, it is partially open, and the rest is this backspacer. The backspacer does say limited run, and this is number 81 of that limited run, although it doesn't say how many is it, or, you know, what, it doesn't tell you how many are in the run. Uh, if someone wants to comment with that down below, that would be helpful. Uh, the, the way that they've executed the, the frame side is really well done. You know, it doesn't, you know, I know we talk about this is the show side, this is the frame side. In my mind, both sides are equally attractive. You could really call either one of these the show side. Uh, and the um, milled titanium, 3D titan milled titanium uh, pocket clip is a really, really nice touch. It looks really awesome. It is reversible, as is the thumb stud. So if you're a lefty, obviously you can't move the frame lock, but you could move the pocket clip and you could move the thumb lug or the thumb stud to the other side and, uh, and have it a little nicer for uh, your usage. Uh, it does have, I, I'm hoping you can see that in the titanium, uh, in the blue anodized sections here, there are these very finely milled lines that look really, really sharp. Uh, really, really attractive looking blade. And of course, this nice flat, uh, normally finished piece. Now when it's open, I love the way this blade flows. All the lines just naturally meld into one another. Uh, the, without, the, without the pocket clip you can see that a little nicer. So a really, really nice looking blade and very comfortable in hand. Now the only thing I would say about this knife is that it doesn't have any jimping, it doesn't have any deep finger choils or anything like that. So it's not really designed to be a tactical blade uh, or you know, a hard use blade of any kind. This is this is a high-end blade, an EDC blade, a uh, gentleman's folder. It's the kind of knife uh, you would carry, uh, you know, with an if you're going out on a date or when, in a nice pair of jeans or even in a suit pocket. It's a little heavy for slacks, but I think you could do it. Uh, certainly what I wear, sort of casual pants, you can definitely get away with it in those. So great looking blade. Uh, the handle is very comfortable. The titanium is certainly thick enough to give that sense of value and quality while not being so thick that the knife you know, feels way, way overweighted. Uh, the back spacer is really well done and matches nicely with the anodizing. Uh, and it's, I like the, the, that the blue kind of finish goes all over the back and all around. I'm going to see if I can show you this part. See how this is all anodized blue as well and back here. So it looks really, really sharp that where the edges are uh, consistent with that blue color. Okay, uh, certainly very comfortable, and in fact it's more grippy than you would probably think. I think the, the thin lines here in the blue anodizing make it more comfortable and more grippy in hand. Um, although, as, as has been pointed out by others, and certainly I would agree, this is not really meant to be a hard use knife, it's not really meant to be a combat knife. You know, if you're going overseas or something, this is probably not the knife to take with you. There are lots of better options for that. Okay, so great knife, looks awesome. Let me back out here. Okay, come on, there we go. Yeah, let me back out and give my overall impressions. So, overall, uh, I, this is a really nice looking blade. It's very, very smooth. It's extremely well executed. And when you hold this in hand, if, if you have held and used, you know, a lot of zero tolerances and spider codes, and, and I have, you know, I've got lots of the high end spider codes and zero tolerances and, uh, others, I've got some really nice flippers, but uh, this thing is in a whole nother category. The only thing that I have that would compare close to it would be um, my Bros T4 or my uh, Bros Silent Soldier. Uh, both of those are are close, but even they don't quite reach uh, the level of quality that you get with this blade. Okay, so uh, overall, I really like this knife. Uh, I certainly would not 
recommended as a combat knife or a hard use folder, bushcraft or something like that. But uh, if you do a job like I do where I'm in an office a lot of the time or if I'm you know, preaching somewhere or speaking at a, at a you know, conference or whatever, uh, you could definitely carry this. Uh, very, very, very well executed, very attractive uh, and just you know, overall hits a level of quality that uh, is certainly in keeping with its price point and probably in keeping with even a higher price point. Now, one last thing is that price point is quite high. I think regular price is about 390 bucks. So if you've got that to drop on a knife, there's a lot of competition out there, especially if you, you know, once you break that $400 price point, uh, there are tons of mid techs, there are customs, there's all kinds of things that you could be um, looking at in terms of competition with this, okay? So there you go. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'm really gonna enjoy this knife uh, and we'll talk to you later. Sorry about that, the room